Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Suspense. The adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Dragnet. And now, Gangbusters. Welcome to the Film Detective Podcast, where we bring you theater of the mind programming from the golden age of radio. I'm your host, Carl Amari. This time, it's a 1957 radio sci-fi adventure of X-1, starring Peter Fernandez. Stick around, we'll be right back. You wouldn't know the truth if it followed you, mister. Creator and star Jack Webb is here to bring you just the facts, ma'am, in Dragnet. Webb stars as Sergeant Joe Friday in a police detective drama so action-packed it made its way across radio and television and motion pictures. We're bringing you over two dozen episodes of Dragnet right here on The Film Detective. Space travel and alien life were hot topics through the 1950s and intelligent science fiction writing was full of predictions about the future of the human race. In 1955, NBC launched a science fiction radio series titled X-1, which was a revival of a previous series called Dimension X. Produced and broadcast on the East Coast, X-1 soon became a fan favorite. Radio script writers Ernest Kenoy and George Lefferts devoted long hours to adapting stories from Galaxy Science Fiction magazine and also writing their own stories. Top writers of the genre contributed stories too, including Ray Bradbury, Isaac Asimov, and Robert A. Heinlein. Executives at NBC never understood the popular fascination for science fiction, believing that only juvenile listeners tuned in to hear the broadcasts. But they were wrong. Sci-fi fans of all ages were listening and enjoying X-1 from 1955 until 1958. In this episode, we experience a day a world comes to an end from a younger perspective. Here's End as a World, starring Peter Fernandez on X-1 from August 1st, 1957. Countdown for blast off. X-5, 4, 3, 2, X-1, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X minus one. X minus one and end as a world. I saw it on the doormat in the front porch. The boy had made a lucky throw and the paper was spread out neatly on the doormat facing me as I came out of the screen door. The headline was black across the top. They used the big type, the kind they use for presidential elections or when the town all-star little league team won the national championship. I stood and looked at it through the screen door. I hadn't quite rubbed the sleep out of my eyes, so first all I saw was the little boxes of the screen. And then suddenly my eyes snapped into focus and I read it. This is the day the world ends. Pete! Pete, come in and eat your breakfast. Well, just a minute, Ma. Now you leave the newspaper alone. You can read it later. Come on now, the eggs are getting cold. Yeah, but Ma, it's today. Well, what's today? Well, look at the headline. What's the only thing on the front page? Well, look. 
This is the day the world ends. Oh, that. Well, world's end or no, I won't have you eating cold scrambled eggs. Now, you sit right down and eat your breakfast. I brought the newspaper into the breakfast table. I turned to the sports page. The Dodgers were winning or losing, I forget which, and UCLA was strong and was going to beat everybody they met that fall. An H-bomb had been tested in the middle of the Pacific, blowing another island off the map, just as if we had islands to spare. Ordinarily, that would be on the front page, but not today. Now, don't get the newspaper and the egg yolk. Mm. All right, Ma. Want some toast? Peter, do you want some toast? All right, Ma. It was Saturday. Big things always seem to happen on Saturdays. I ate breakfast and got up. I had the usual things to do, like mowing the lawn, for instance, but I skipped it that day. There wasn't any use mowing a lawn on a day like that. I went out remembering not to slam the door. It wasn't much, but it showed thoughtfulness. I went past the church and looked at the sign that was set diagonally in the corner so it could read from both streets. There it was in big letters, quoting from the papers, This is the day the world ends. Dr. Davidson scheduled a prayer meeting for the calculated time. It was a bright day. People were out walking or just standing looking at the sky. It was too early to look up. Hey, Pete! Pete, here you are! Catch! Uh, here! Hey! Uh, who showed you how to throw a football hit? Got this? Uh, hey, nice pass! Here you are, lateral. I got it. Here, uh, throw, throw me a long one, huh? I'll run out on that button hook. No, no, look, I, I don't feel like it. Not today. Well, uh, what'll we do? Oh, listen, the new issue of Popular Rocketry came in down at Grover's. Yeah, I, I saw it. Or we could go down and see Howie. All right. Pete! Peter! Hey, your mother wants you. Yeah, what is it, Ma? Now, don't go too far. I've got some things I want you to do. What? I want you to help me move some trash out of the basement and help me move some of the potted plants around in front. Ma, what's the use of doing things like that on a day like today? Never mind. You come back by 11 o'clock, you hear? No. Oh, come on. Howie's probably down at Grover's. Hey, look at this high hurdle. I'll go right over the sign. Here I go. Olympic star Paul Smithfield. <laughs> He went up over the sign easily. Paul's on the track team in high school. I looked at the sign again as he went over the top. This is the day the world ends. They never said more than that, not in the newspapers or in the signs painted on the brick walls. They wanted it to hang in our minds, something we couldn't quite touch, but we knew was there. We walked along down Green Street toward Grover's. Oh, what do you think of it? What? You know, today. I don't know. What about you? We got it coming. Yeah, but will we get it? I don't know. Hey, look. It's going to be nice and bright today. Yeah, it is now. Might clot over. Yeah, it won't matter. It'll split the sky when it comes. Hey, you hear the new song? Hmm? Some disc jockey wrote it. I love you, I love you, love you. Hey, it sounds awful. Oh, listen, listen. I love you, love you, love you, till the day the world ends. I love you, love you, love you, till my heartbreak mends. And a lot more guff like that. <laughs> you know, it seems awful. I mean, making a song on a thing like that, you'd think they'd have more respect. Well, why shouldn't they cash in on it? How about that contest on TV? What will you do on the day the world ends? In 25 words or less. You know, some people will do anything for a buck. Yeah. You think they'd have some, uh, I, I don't know, some understanding of how important it is. Well, they do. You should see the souvenir stands on Main Street. You know, pennant saying the end of the world, stuff like that. Ah, that's disgusting. Grover's has an end of the world Sunday. Joey Tripp had one last night. It was really the end. Yeah, he's a pig. Yeah, it sure is. Boy, it was really something with nuts on top. <laughs> Mm. 
Now back to X minus one and end as a world. We went on to find Howie. He's a little guy, but he can throw a football further and faster than anybody else on the team. Howie was carrying a model of her rocket ship, carbon dioxide powered. Hey, let's see the model, Howie. Doesn't work. Well, what do we do? I don't know. We could play Saluji. No, we left the football over at Pete's. Oh, might as well just sit down on the grass. Okay. Hey. Hey, I wonder if it, it'll really come. Yeah, where will the president watch it from? They should have a good view from the White House. Mm-hmm. No better than us right here. What about Australia? Will they see it over there? They'll see it all over. Africa, too? And what about the Eskimos? Doesn't matter whether they actually see it or not. It'll come to everyone at the same time. Yeah, how about that? Everybody. Not just in this town, but all over. Wherever there are people and, and even where they're not. You know what I keep thinking about? What? I keep thinking about the man who made the H-bomb. I bet he felt silly and spiteful blowing up an island. I mean, somebody might have wanted to live on it if he just left it there, uh-huh. you know? Yeah, bet he'd feel pretty small with his old H-bomb after today. Pow. My mother's over at the church praying. Uh, what for? She just said that's what she wanted to spend today doing, right up to the last minute. Hey, all the churches are holding prayer meetings. Town board wanted to close up that carnival on Pearl Street. You know, the one with the cooch tent? They said it wasn't dignified for today. They close it up? Mm-mm. The manager said he had his license, and he didn't care if today was the day the world ended or not. He was putting on five shows right up till it happens. Funny idea, those girls dancing, and then, boom, it happens. And nobody to look at them anymore. I can't understand people. Shows and lawns and cleaning the trash out of the cellar on a day like this, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, people get used to doing certain things. Yeah, but today? Even today. That's how people are, I guess. Just got to keep on with what they're doing, even if it doesn't make any sense. Now, we talked about it for a while, but we talked it out long ago. There was really nothing new we could say. Every once in a while, we'd look up at the sky, but it wasn't going to come until it got here. Finally, I went home for lunch. Now, you sit still and eat your lunch. Oh, Ma. It'll happen without your help. It's going to be all right. Do you think so? I think so. I, um, I'll give you your allowance now. Yeah, but, Ma, it's, it's only Saturday. I, I don't give my allowance. Well, I'll it's... give it to you today anyway. You might as well spend it this afternoon downtown. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Ma. All right, I won't keep you over lunch. You can run uptown and watch it from there. Okay, Ma. You gonna go? Of course I'm not. Why should I get into that mob? I can watch it just as well from here. Ma, sure she could. It wasn't the same. Everybody I knew was gonna be there. I changed my shirt before I left. I took a rag and wiped the dust from my shoes. I wasn't trying to be fussy or dressed up or anything. I just thought I should do it. I walked uptown slow because there was lots of time to kill. There was shade and sun on the streets and a few big clouds in the sky. I never knew how slow a day could pass. I suppose I should have slept late in the morning and kept busy doing something. Well, this was worse than putting on a uniform and waiting till game time. At least there was a coach on the field to let you know what to do as you ran through the drill. I ran into Paul at the corner of Cross and Chestnut. Hey, uh, you nervous? No, no. Why should I be? I mean, you're not in suspense? If only we had some way of knowing for sure. A radio, maybe. Oh, there's no radio. The calculations have been checked. Yeah, yeah, but maybe there's something we forgot or don't know. A lot of things can go wrong. Hi, right, fellas. Well, hi, Howie. Howie. You want to go down to Grover's and get them molded? I, I don't know. Well, we've still got lots of time. We won't miss anything. We all went down and had malted at Grover's. The television was on. They were showing a street in India with people looking up. They flashed all around to Italy, China, and Brazil. Except for their clothes, it wasn't much different from here. They were all looking up. Well, let's get outside. I haven't finished my malted. Uh, what's the difference in a day like today, huh? I want to finish my malted. Oh. 
Outside, I noticed there was a slight overcast. The big billowing clouds had passed, but this was worse. I hoped that it would clear away in time. Not, not that it really mattered. Hey, it's a pretty big crowd for a Saturday. Well, this isn't a usual Saturday. What time is it? I don't know. You got a watch, Paul? No. We can see the clock on the merchant's block from the corner. Come on. Hey, it's Ginny Wexelberg. You see her over there? Hey, how'd you like to spend a day with her? That'll really make it a big day, huh? Oh, you don't need that old Ginny Wexelberg to make this a big day. After today, a blind 15-year-old kid isn't going to seem so important. After today, nothing's going to seem important, huh? Well, there's the clock. We've still got plenty of time. We just walked around. A few other kids from school passed by, and we stopped. It was getting closer. The space between the minutes was getting longer and longer. Hey, I'm hungry. I want to go back and get a candy bar. You're crazy. It's almost time. I got a couple of minutes. Look. Well, you, you just had a malted. Well, I don't know. I'm hungry. I mean, I got a right to eat a candy bar before it happens, don't I? How can you think about food? It's only one minute. Well, all right. I just wanted to get one last candy bar, that's all. You think we could see better if we went across the street? It doesn't make any difference. It's going to be all over the world. It was still a minute to go, and I kept wondering if there'd been a miscalculation. Now we were all looking up. All over the world, people were looking up. It, it, it was quiet. You could hear them breathing. I sneaked a look across the street. Ginny Wexelberg was staring up, and she was crying. I kept wondering why a pretty girl like that should be crying. And then, just as I looked back at the sky, it happened. <laughs> It came, the flash across the skies, a silver streak, the biggest vapor trailer ever was. It went from this side to that side in no time. It split the sky and was gone before the shockwave hit us. Nobody said anything. We stood there and shivered and straightened up after the rumbling sound passed. You know what? It's going to go around the whole world. Well, he did it. Yeah. Yeah, he did it. Yeah, he sure did. All the way to Mars and back. Safe and right on schedule. You realize that? He did it. He did it. The first trip to Mars. He's back. He's safe. Yippee! Yippee! <laughs> the factory whistles down by the river started blowing. The bells of the Baptist, the Congregationalists, and the Roman Catholic Church were ringing. We were all jumping up and down, shouting, screaming, laughing as the vapor trail slowly faded into the overcast. I grabbed a hold of somebody next to me, and all of a sudden I realized it was Ginny Wexelberg, and she kissed me, and I kissed her back. And we yelled louder than all the factory whistles. We had a right. It was just like the paper said. This was the day the world ended, and the universe began. Next week on X-1, another exciting story from the pages of Galaxy. The Scapegoat by Richard Maples. If you saw a big teenage young bully beating up a helpless old man on the street, what would you do? Try to stop it? Or save your own neck by just walking away? Well, this is the story of a man who did stop it. Of a newspaper reporter who not only rescued the old man, but took him home hoping to develop a good angle for the newspaper series he was writing on juvenile delinquency. The scapegoat tells of what happened then, of the terrible threat posed by this seemingly harmless old man to the unsuspecting reporter and his family. Be sure to hear it next week on X-1. Wondering what the weather will be like tomorrow night? Will it be cool? Will it be hot? Will it rain or not? Well, don't give it another thought, because NBC's Monitor has a weatherproof evening plan for you with excursions to three world-famous underground scenic spots. You'll go roving with Monitor on a two-and-a-half-mile trip through Marble Cave in Missouri, 
You'll listen to the music of a stalactite organ in Lore Caverns, Virginia. And you'll visit the historic catacombs of Rome. Between trips underground, you'll hear another merry report on his vacation tour of Europe by comedian Jonathan Winters. And you'll rub elbows with international celebrities at a unique party in Tutshore's famous restaurant in New York. There'll be music and news, too. In fact, there'll be something for everybody on Monitor. So start your weekend right with Monitor Friday night and stay with Monitor all weekend long. Nightline takes you to wherever exciting, interesting, and entertaining things are happening. Tonight, over most of these same NBC stations. That's X-1, starring Peter Fernandez in End as a World, from August 1st, 1957, is heard on NBC. Next time on the Film Detective Podcast, we'll open the creaking door to the inner sanctum, starring Carl Swenson, so don't miss it. To learn more about this series, visit thefilmdetective.com. See you next time.